Welcome back to the His and Her Money Show, brought to you by HisAndHerMoney.com. Thank you guys so much for coming back and tuning in to another episode of our show. We know that this is going to be helpful for a lot of people because a lot of people have trouble when it comes to their credit. That's right. So we invited Marsha Barnes of the Finance Bar to come on the show today to discuss with us everything about credit. What we need to do to build it, how we need to monitor it, and so on. This is a topic that we all need to master and get a hold of because credit plays such a huge role in everything we do in our day-to-day life, whether it's to get a home loan or even get a job. So this information is needed, and that's why we brought Marsha on to help us all out get into the right place with our credit. So let's get Marsha on the line and let's hear her advice. Hey, Hey, Marsha. Hey, Marsha. Welcome to the show. Hi, guys. How are you? Thank you for having me. We're thankful that you are on the line with us today because you have a wealth of knowledge that our audience is sure to benefit from. And we know that you have much to offer in the area of personal finance, especially in the area of credit. That's a big deal for a lot of people. So we know that what you have to say is going to be super helpful. But before we get into your wonderful advice, can you take a moment to introduce yourself to our audience and let them know what you're all about? Yeah, sure. So as you mentioned, my name is Marsha. My name is Marsha Barnes, and I am the founder of The Finance Bar based out of Charlotte, North Carolina. So a little bit about my background, uh, my personal background. I, uh, again, I'm in Charlotte. I was born and raised in a city called Lancaster, South Carolina. It's probably about 30 minutes south of Charlotte. So not far from where I am at all. Born and raised there. Met my husband there. He was my high school sweetheart. And we've been married now for almost 18 years. So I'm super excited about that. We have one son who's in college now and I miss him terribly. So I'm still going uh, through that phase as well. Uh, professionally, my background is in banking. I have over 12 years of banking experience and I'm also a certified financial educator, as I mentioned, also the founder of the Finance Bar, which is a premier personal finance mobile hub. So it's actually uh, a bus that I had um, outfitted and turned it into a financial literacy finance hub on wheels. Something else that I'm really excited about. I just launched that in November of 2014. So I'm coming up on my one year anniversary. So that's just a bit about my personal and professional background. That's awesome. That's awesome. We had the privilege of checking out the finance bar in person. And I must say that it is amazing. Yeah, absolutely phenomenal. It really is. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. I'm so glad that you were able to come see it in person. Yeah. I love the concept. I think that people are going to love it even more after they hear your story and go to Finance Bar and check it out, guys. You all have to go to her website. She has photos over there where you can check out this bus. I mean, it's it's beautiful. Thank you. I appreciate that. All right. So let's get into a little bit of the backstory. You could tell us a little bit about your upbringing or your personal experience on why you believe that it is important for people to get their credit in order. Yeah, sure. So my upbringing, I like to share the story with everyone and tell them that I, I can't say that in my early years, when I say early years, I mean, as a you know high school individual, as a very young adult, I haven't always been on top of my finances because I just didn't think it was exciting, you know, just like anyone that in their earlier years is that we think about things that we really want more than we think about what we need. We also think about how we are competing with our peers. So that's either students in our classroom, college mates, or even girlfriends that we had is how do we compete in that circle. But I also have to say that as long as I've been knowing my mom was my mom, she has always been someone that's been extremely savvy with her money. She's always watched it very carefully. And that's her and my dad. And I, I don't, they, they always had very good, very good jobs. But when it comes, when it came to money, they were always very confident in it, handled their personal finances very well. My mom is an avid clearance rack shopper. She's someone that's so frugal that she doesn't even do call waiting. She feels that call waiting is for someone that needs to talk to two people at the same time. So I've always had very good figures growing up when it came to personal finance. Back in 2000, I always get the years mixed up, but nevertheless, both of my parents were laid off within a few months 
of one another. And it was a wake up call for me. And I say that because for anyone listening, I'm sure that you can relate that if you were laid off or if you had someone in your family that you were extremely close to, because my parents mean the world to me, when they were laid off, I panicked for them, but they didn't. It wasn't, it was not an emergency to them. It was more of an inconvenience. And that's what I always like to say. It was an inconvenience. Again, was it a shocker? Yes, but it was not something that they were in awe about or felt really depressed about. And for me, that felt good to know that they were okay. And even though they were not making the money that they were accustomed to making, they still made it work. So that was to be applauded. Now, for me, prior to the finance bar, I still had a nonprofit. It was called Financial Empowerment Charlotte. So then I was just, you know, just myself running the nonprofit, teaching individuals in the community again about the importance of personal finance. But when that happened with my parents, I wanted to take that to the next level because I, for whatever reason, didn't feel like I was doing enough. I knew that I did not want commercial space. I did not want a brick and mortar. Uh, Charlotte is a huge banking city. There are finances all over the place here. So I know that I, I know that I wanted something different and I wanted to be accessible to people that could not come to me that didn't have transportation. And I didn't want to leave anyone behind. So when I say anyone, I mean people that are in shelters, homeless shelters, women in shelters with their kids. And when I would notice things like that, again, when I was running financial empowerment, I noticed that while you had a percentage of people that were doing fairly well for themselves, some were still living paycheck to paycheck. You had some doing well for themselves that had enough money to sustain them and to save. But then you also had people that were in shelters that couldn't even make a way for themselves. So the finance bar and the concept of it being on wheels, a mobile hub was the for the sole purpose of me of not forgetting anybody and not leaving anyone behind. So that's just a little bit of the backstory about how I got here in the finance space and then ultimately how the finance bar came to be about. Wow, that's that's an awesome, yeah. awesome story. And I know that for a lot of people, they they hear that, they hear the story of how both of your parents were laid off yet weren't panicked and were comfortable and were able to weather the storm because of decisions that they made and the, the financial situation that they put themselves in. And I know a lot of people listening right now come to this show because they're they're trying to turn things around. They're trying to get their finances together, but they, they've made some mistakes in their past. And a lot of times that leads people to ending up having some bad credit and some issues with their credit, but they want to do better. They want to get to a better space with their credit. So for people that want to raise their credit score and get to a better, better place, with their credit situation, what is step one for them? Well, I would say step one would be to pull your credit report and start taking a a really good look at it. And I know that that may seem like a simple exercise because most people at least pull their credit report once a year. But I I would have to say start to really make friends with your credit report. That That would be step one. Check to make sure that everything you see on your credit report is accurate, that everything that you see there is accurate. And if you're having challenges with understanding, because some credit reports can be a challenge to even read them, um, if you're not accustomed to it, if that's not something that you're used to doing, seek out help for someone to help you read it. But number one, the first step is definitely check to make sure that everything that you see on your credit report is correct. And I, I even mean when it comes to your address and things of that nature, just number one, make sure that everything there belongs to you and all the account balances and all the creditors are the correct is the correct information. And how frequent should we be checking our credit report? Well, you know, I think that's it, it depends. It's, it's a personal decision for many people. Again, as I mentioned, it's once a year. For some people, it's twice a year. It's every six months. But for someone that really wants to raise their credit score, my recommendation is that you check it every quarter, like every three months. Or even once a month. I'm someone that I check my credit report every single month, but that's also because I'm attached to a system that allows me to do that. So it's a credit reporting system. It's through my bank and it does more than just provide me with my credit score, my credit report. It also helps with identity theft. So things of that nature. So if you're someone that you really want to raise your score and you want to keep your eye on it, I suggest that you either, either do it quarterly or you do it monthly. I am a fan of putting money where it really matters. So I know that we have, you know, companies like Credit Karma. I tried Credit Karma for me personally. Credit Karma didn't show every, it didn't show me all of my accounts. 
So it didn't work even though it was free. So I'm willing to pay whatever it costs. And, and most credit reporting companies are inexpensive and most banks or credit unions offer that service. For me, it's a $14 a month. So I'm okay with that because I'm, I'm able to have my hands always on my credit report and it gives me alerts. It just does a lot of different things for you. So it just depends on how often you really want to stay attached and how, how much you really want to see how your credit score is doing or if it's increasing. So if somebody is listening right now and they want to follow your advice on the monthly side, and you said you did it through your bank. So if they walk into their local bank or credit union, what should they be asking for to get set up on a system similar? You would just ask if you have any enhanced identity theft plans. The, the simplest thing to ask them is, do you have any type of credit reporting products? And the answer will be yes. They'll typically know exactly what you're talking about. My bank did, and it was identity theft protection. It was actually enhanced identity theft protection or credit monitoring system that you use every month. So it's through your bank. If you're a member, it's usually less expensive. So that's something I, I encourage people to do because I hear it a lot that people check it once a year or twice a year and then you never look at it. And what I also notice, guys, is that when people check it is only to see how my what my credit score is. So once you get that number, are you really investigating your credit report, looking through it, combing through it with a fine tooth comb? Those are the things that you need to do. And for me, again, because I check it every single month, I'm, it provides me with a relationship, not with just my money, but a, accountability to my credit report. So if I know that I want my number to be at a certain amount, that means I'm going to do the work. And after I do the work, I want to be able to see the results every single month of every single month of that month just to see how it's working for me. Now, can you talk us through the importance of developing a good credit history? Yeah, sure. So I think that credit number one is one of the most important numbers that you will have that will have a huge impact on your life. So I view it as a financial reputation. You know, if someone loaned you money I and mean, you didn't pay the money back on time or you didn't pay it in full, would you go out and give that person money again? Maybe, maybe not. So creditors are no different. It's really the only way that they can measure our financial reputation. And while that may not seem fair because there are moments in life where you just can't avoid the situation. So that could be layoffs, you know, disabilities, death. So any area that plays a huge role in your life could send your score tumbling. But I think it's important to realize is that it plays a pivotal, a pivotal role. So to really ensure that when you have the ability to make it work for you, make it work for you, you know, pay attention to it. And again, develop a really great relationship with it. Yeah, that's, that's, that's so true. So true. And I know that another big factor in our credit score you know, according to your advice is that we need to keep our credit balances low. Can you talk us through why that's important? Well, that's important because creditors want to see that you're able to balance credit effectively. You know, if you have, you know, a, a credit card and you have a $10,000 balance on it, then you want to keep that between 15 to 20 percent of the usage on that credit. So, you know, it's just a sim sim simple math. You do $10,000 times 0.15 or 0.20 and see what amount that is. They want to know that you can balance that credit limit and not being able to use it all. Because what happens is, is that if you have one credit card for $15,000, they realize you have another with a $10,000 balance that you, that you've spent $8,000 on. You're maxing out all of your credit limit. So then that sends a red flag to the credit bureau to say, whoa, because they are not necessarily so far in debt, but because they have very limited room to stretch any further, that's been a risk to the credit, to the creditors. Now the question is, it will Marsha be able to pay us back and to pay company B back and to pay company C back? So it's really a matter of having a very well balanced, I like to use the word portfolio when it comes to your credit because it's viewed as if she's all, if she's used all of this up, everything up on this end, and then that third wheel, there's no more room to stretch her any further. So you want to try to keep your balances as low as you possibly can because that's going to always increase your credit score. It just shows that you that you're dependable in managing all of the credit balances that you have. That's all it's really doing. It's it's saying that we gave you this amount or a company gave you this amount to use, but you're balancing it very well. And that just sends, you know, great marks to credit bureaus. 
Now, how does eliminating debt impact your credit score? Well, because again, it goes back to what I just stated. You know, when you eliminate that debt, you become less of a risk. You become less of a risk. So once you strategically pay that off and you pay it down, the more that you pay it off, it's just more of a risk. It's someone over here that I, this person does not have a lot of debt. And then you have couple B or person B that has a lot of debt. So then of course, when you, when you match that up, the less risk would be for the individuals that do not have a lot of debt on their credit report. That means, again, that you are less of a risk and you typically have more disposable income. But when you have less disposable income and you have more debt, when it comes again to creditors, to lending you, if it's if it's to get a loan or it's to get a credit, uh, get a credit card, it's more of a financial risk for them because you already have a really mass amount of debt. So that means that based on what you're making or based on your income, how are you able to strategically then pay everyone? It's like a pool, a pool of people that you have to pay. So that's why it's very important to balance that out. Now, we get asked often, and we've heard both sides of the fence when it comes to, let's say you pay off a credit card. Should you close out that credit card or should you let the credit card company close it out eventually over time? Well, I don't think you should close it out, especially if it's an old account, because if you've been paying on that credit card well, even if you decide to pay it off, then I don't recommend closing the account out because that's going to still show your credit history from that creditor. So that's not something that I would recommend. And, and you, and I also review it like this is that if I have a $2,000 balance on something or credit card and I just pay it off, Well, that could mean that I received a bonus or I I came into a lump sum of money and I just decided to pay it all. That doesn't mean that I I would do well with making payments. That just means that I was able to pay it off. So that that's it doesn't necessarily send great remarks to the credit bureau. Great remarks come when you're able to pay it off and pay it off on time when it's due and even when you're able to pay more of the balance. So I would recommend just keeping that account open, not again getting more credit or running that credit card up, but just keeping it so your record of how you strategically paid over the years will still reflect for you. Hmm. Great advice. Another great tip that you give is to set one credit building goal. Now, can you talk us through that? Yep, I sure can. I really believe that when you set one credit building goal, it becomes less overwhelming for you. So if there's one thing that I, I wanted to pay off, I need to focus on that one thing. Now, that one thing could be an old doctor's bill that's now in collections. Well, if it's still showing up on your credit, that means that someone is still looking at it. Now, it could be a bill that's one hundred dollars. Well, make make a goal, make it a goal to pay that amount off, not to pay that off, to pay a five thousand dollar credit card off, to pay a twelve thousand dollar auto loan off. Just set that one goal. And once that is paid off, then you can push that to the side and then start on the next thing. So you want to do that again in steps because when you try to work with too many accounts at one time and you're trying to pay off too many things at one time, it becomes overwhelming. It can also become confusing and you'll find yourself not really making any headway with any of them. So I definitely recommend just start with that one thing. And it also builds your momentum up and it gives you great motivation when you can see that you've paid one off. So I'll take that back to reviewing your credit report every single month if you if you really want your credit score to grow. Is if back in August I wanted to pay that collection bill off from a doctor and then October when I check my credit report, it's off of there, then that's a win for me. That means that I that means that I won because that was my goal and I accomplished my goal and now I can move on to what I want to do next. Now, you also feel that people should create a credit check up calendar alert. Mm-hmm. What is that? Well, when I when I speak about alerts, I think about number one, well, two things. Number one is that you can just set a calendar reminder. So just just like you would do anything else, just set a reminder for yourself to check your credit report whenever you decide to. So, again, if it's once a year, if it's twice a year, quarterly, once a month. Whatever you decide, just set a date on your calendar to make sure you cre- check your credit report. Now, if you are a part of or connected to a credit monitoring system within that, most of them will allow you to also is to set credit alerts. As an example, if I want my credit report, my credit score to be 
780. I'll use that as a number. And I am now at a credit score of 650. Well, in my credit monitoring system, there's a way to set an alert and it will send me an email to say, hey, Marcia, your, your credit score raised by 10 points. Now this is your credit score. And when it, when I am at 780, I'll get an email to say you met your goal. So it's, it's almost like a, an accountability partner for you. So two options. Again, one is just to set a calendar reminder to set your credit. And two is if you're part of a credit monitoring system, utilize it as much as you can. There are tons of alerts that it will allow, allow you to use. It'll allow you to monitor if your credit report has been checked or ran and you didn't give someone permission to. So there are just different options that you can use, again, to really keep yourself accountable to your credit score goals. Now, when people come to us for advice in the area of building credit, one strategy that we often mention is the fact that you can get a secured credit card as a way to help out in that area. I'm curious to hear what your stance is on on getting secured credit cards to build credit. Yeah, I, I actually, actually applaud secured credit cards, and I say that because for many people, a secure, for many people, a secured card is the only option for someone that's new to credit or you need to rebuild after a life changing event. And I'm definitely a fan of saying that everyone des- deserves to have an option or a second chance. So I really believe that, believe in them. Now, I would also add that when it comes to secured credit cards, that you have to be careful and do your research because there are many fees associated with secured credit cards and some of them can be interest rate. Some of them can be just monthly fees that you have to pay on a card. And I also noticed that many secured credit cards now will force you to purchase some type of insurance that's associated with it. But for someone that really needs a second chance or for someone that's new to credit and you need to build your credit, then a secured credit card is an option for you. And it won't always be that way. So it's not not as if you'll have to always depend on that method. But to really get a start out or a second chance, definitely, I say go for it. Just do your research. And even if you are someone that needs to rebuild and you feel like you have to accept any fees or any interest rates, that's not always the case. Always still search for the card that has the less fees associated with it. Now, are there any credit building scams out there that people should be aware of? Absolutely. So credit repair companies, you know, that, that guarantee they can repair your credit for you. You know, I stand on the belief that if you... If you owe something and someone promises you that they can make it disappear off your credit report, that doesn't sound believable to me. It almost is if when it's too good to be true, it typically is. Right, right. So that's one. I just don't believe that someone can take something off my credit report that I know that I owe. And and maybe they can. So for for anyone that's listening, maybe if you've used that in the past and you no longer sit on your credit report now, that may be the case. I'm just a believer that eventually it could show back up and there's nothing you could really do about it. It's not if, as if you can say, well, I hired a credit reporting system to make it go away from me. So that's that's that. But I'll also say, as we mentioned before, is when it comes to secured credit cards, it's just to be careful there as well. Because when people feel that you're desperate or that you really need something, then there's more fees, more interest rates. So just two things to be mindful of is credit repair companies that offer guarantees and then when it comes to secured credit cards, just be mindful of who you choose in that area as well. Great advice, Marsha. But you know what? I'm willing to bet that there's somebody listening right now who just looks at their personal situation when it comes to their credit, feeling like, you know what, there's no fix. They're just too messed up. What kind of encouragement could you give that person listening right now? Yeah, I would have to say that your situation hasn't always been like, hasn't been always been like this and it always won't be. Take small steps, recover, and then celebrate every single win along the way. As we, as we mentioned before, it doesn't matter what you pay off on your credit report. It just matters that you made your best effort to try to start to do it. And that, I think that's just where, that's where the magic really happens. And I'm, and I'm sure someone listening can relate to that is that when you're able to just pay off that one thing, that you know that it's been sitting on your credit report for what seems like forever and you finally do it, it's going to really get you pumped to keep that motivation. So month over month, when you put the tools into place that we discussed previously, you'll notice those changes and then practice patience, practice patience, but remain diligent, you know, keep, go- keep going. And that's why I continuously mention, mention cr- checking your credit score every single month. 
but not only your score just to play the numbers game, but to really hold you accountable to something. So if your goal is to increase your credit score, then that's fine. Put some plans behind what does this look like? How do you know that you're making any kind of increase in that area? Is it that you're going to wait to the end of the year and say, oh, let me check my credit report now? No, make time throughout the month, every month, again, or at least quarterly if you're someone that wants to grow your score. But remain diligent, but definitely remain patient. Please tell our audience more about your site, thefinancebar.com. Yeah, so again, thefinancebar.com, that's where you can find me. Again, you'll find more information about our mobile hub, but you will also find details about our virtual members club. And we talk a lot about similar topics that we're speaking of now. Every single month, there's a different personal finance topic. Our members receive a workbook at the beginning of the month. They receive a virtual personal finance session with myself and another expert in the industry. Uh, We do a monthly challenge and then we have a private forum. So in the private forum, we're able to hold each other accountable. So it's amazing. And then also attached to the site is a blog where we speak about similar topics, credit, budget, savings, insurance, all that good stuff. So it's just a wealth of information there where you can check us out. Oh, and our app, the Finance Bar app. Make sure you download that as well. It's available in Android and for Apple users. It's an awesome app. I like to think of it as a budget mobile application because it's an expense manager. It's very simple. You plug in your net monthly income and it will shoot out for you how much you should be spending in certain areas. And it will also give you an amount of how much you should be, how much you should be saving each month. So it's awesome as well. Marsha, we appreciate all your awesomeness and your great advice on the show today. Thank you for putting us in your schedule and coming on and sharing with our audience. We appreciate it. Thank you, Marsha. Anytime. You guys know that anytime. There you have it. Everything you need to know to improve your credit situation. Great information. information. And I loved even how she brought out the whole, you know, point of identity theft. You know, that is so important. That's one of the reasons why you also need to monitor your credit. We know that firsthand. Mm -hmm. We have had our credit, oh my gosh, stolen from us numerous times. You know, so monitoring our credit is is very, very important for us. I think all of these action steps are easy to do. And I say easy because they're not lofty and they can be done by the average person. And even to the point of going to your local bank and signing up for their services uh, for a nominal fee. I mean, she talked about she only pays like $13, but for that $13 a month, She's getting a lot of peace of mind because, like you just said, identity theft is so rampant and services like that provided by a reputable bank is something that you might want to have on your side to protect yourself against those threats that are out there. So, guys, listen, don't just hear the advice that was given here, but take action and let's get to a better place with our credit because it is so important. So we want you guys to take this knowledge and put it to use. And everybody can go and get a free copy of all three credit bureaus, credit reports over at annualcreditreport.com. That is so important. Sometimes people think that they have to pay for that. You don't have to pay. It's totally free. It's just annualcreditreport.com. And one advice that we recommend is pulling one from each credit bureau or from one of the credit bureaus every single quarter. So therefore, you can monitor it throughout the entire year for free. And we'll be sure to put a link down in the show notes so that you all can find your way over to annualcreditreport.com. Well, that does it for this episode of the His and Her Money Show. Don't forget, visit us over at our website at hisandhermoney.com. And don't forget, you can follow us on Instagram. Just go to instagram.com slash hisandhermoney. Here it is. No matter where you are on the road to financial freedom, The key is to start now and finish strong. Thanks for tuning in to the His and Her Money Show. For more information on how to win with your finances, be sure to visit www.hisandhermoney.com.